Hello, my name is Frederik Steinmetz from BlenderDiplom.com and today I'd like to show you how to use my new add-on uh, Revo to produce this strand of DNA including those bases in between that hold the two helices together. And let's have a look at how this looks in Blender. This is how it looks like. Those of you who've already tried the add-on know it's not capable of creating solid objects. So what I did here was a little hack. I simply used metaballs since they can just merge. And you can see in the end this gets a bit slow, but it rendered fairly fast, so I'm still using this method. So let's start from scratch. I'll delete the default cube and I'll activate my add-on for those of you who don't know how to get it or how to install it, there is a detailed description on our website. Just follow the link below the video and you get very detailed instructions on how to do it as well as a couple of examples and a few more video tutorials about Arevo and a lot more video tutorials on general Blender stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's press Shift A and add a curve and we'll make it significantly larger than it is, something like that, because with metaballs you run into calculation errors once you make them too small. So what I'm doing here right now is just give this a little bit of variation. I don't like my DNA molecules to be too boring. Don't go overboard with this because it might look weird, but in my tests I actually did some pretty wild things in there it still look good. So this is what we have right now, a Bezier curve with about 100, with about 30 meters in length. There we go, 21. Let's make it 25. And since we got the curvature, that should be roughly 30. It doesn't really matter that much, but this is the values for which my tests worked. So I'm using approximately those values. Okay, once you install Arrivo, you get this tab right here with a couple of buttons, and two of them are grayed out. And those two are actually the most important ones, but they need a little bit of preparation. So what I'll do now is I'll add an empty plane axis. Doesn't matter which one, but it does matter that it is animated. So I'll select the path as well. Now I'll press Control P and choose Follow Path. So now we have it following the path, bit of offset makes it look very weird. A quick fix for that is Alt-O. That means clear its origin and therefore it's right on top of the curve, following the curve, including the rotation. That's very important actually. Okay, we can now choose this object here, which will tell my add-on that this is where the copies are supposed to be, replicates. Okay, so Let's create those metaballs. I'll just shift A, metaball, and then I'll scale it down. It doesn't need to be that big, just don't make it too small. And I'll go into edit mode, and it's very important that you, that you go into edit mode first before you do this. And I'll scale this down and push it to the left. Now press period. That makes my pivot point the 3D cursor, which is exactly in the middle of the scene. Now I'll press Shift D to duplicate it in edit mode, very important, then SX minus one. And now we got back in object mode, we got one object that is symmetrical to its middle. So this axis is actually mirroring my object. And this is very important because this is going to be one of the strands and this is going to be the other one of the strands. Now a problem we're having right now is we still can't push those buttons. The reason being that the object offset is working for meshes only. It's sort of specialized so that we can, so that it has great performance. It's actually very, very fast, but it doesn't work with modifiers or objects that are not meshes. And the armature offset, as the name suggests, needs an armature. Now this is a bit of a hack and I apologize for that, but when I actually did this, program this, I did not think of metaballs. So uh, after a while of fumbling around with the 
case distinguishing if there's an armature present or not and doing all that stuff. I just threw it out completely and now we need an armature to actually use this object use this method and um, I just think it's not that much of a hassle to actually get that armature going so I'll open the graph editor I'll go to frame one and I'll just press I and choose a rotation keyframe I'll go to frame 11 and let's rotate this by 20 degrees so over the course of Actually, I should have said we're rotating only around the z-axis. This is important. And so either in the top view, press R20, or in the any other view, press R, Z, and then 20. Now, we're going from frame 1 to 11, so that's 2 degrees per frame, which is fairly slow. But we'd rather make this too slow than too fast, because it's easy to speed it up with the add-on but not that easy to slow it down so better to slow than too fast shift e and choose linear extrapolation which will make it spin for all eternity but so far we don't have the metaballs parented to the armature which in this case is actually pretty important and now as you can see if i scrub through the timeline this is working fine i'll delete the x and y rotation b because i don't need it and those are just keyframes that we don't need to calculate. So I'll press T and make this uh, linear. That's actually two more handles we don't need to calculate. I don't think it matters that much, but uh, you know, just keeping things nice and tidy and also having an eye on the performance, never a bad idea. So now the metaballs have a resolution of 0.4. And this has something to do with how many vertices uh, one of these balls has or how far they are apart. If you go up with the resolution, the calculation time goes down and actually the number of vertices goes down as well. So a bit misleading because a high resolution usually means we're more accurate, but not in this case. And the only reason why I did that is so it's a lot faster. Now, let's double check. We're rotating around the z-axis of this object. Since we haven't rotated it at all, the local equals the global z-axis. Let's have a look at this one. You can see the x-axis at the first frame. Nothing. It's all straight. But once we're wandering around the path, you can see the local axis of this changing. And this is something we want to use for our advantage. But if we have a look at this, if it's supposed to rotate around the strand here, then it needs to point forward with its Z direction, just as it is right here. And this one, because we're going to get the rotation from the empty, the empty needs to point towards the path direction as well. So I'm just going to eyeball this. It's really not that important that it's 100% accurate, but you don't want it to be offset that much also. Okay, so this is what I have now. It's following the path. It's pointing with this z-axis along the path, and I have the keyframes on the armature, not on the metaballs. Very important, because the armature offset will only influence the keyframes of the armature, no matter how many keyframes you have on the metaballs they will be disregarded. Okay, now we're ready. Press the armature offset and we get a couple of options. And right now we get two copies, we get an offset of 10 and no random offset, which is very important. And you can see that produces some very weird stuff. So let's increase the number of copies, let's say 20. And you can see they are actually in a spiral, but the spiral is not the way we want it. The orientation is wrong. So we use the inherit rotation button in order to make the rotation around the path. And you can now see that the armatures are all following the path exactly. Let's create a few more copies, say 50, and you can now see that there's a bit of time after I press the 50. It takes a little bit. And we can see that the those uh, actually 
a coil pretty tight. So let's see what happens if you put that to one. You can see the coiling is a lot less. So why is that? The reason is if we offset the animation that is on this armature right here, if we offset this by one frame only, then their rotation will be very similar. So they will be pretty much very close to each other. If we offset this more, let's say three, you can see the coiling gets more because there is more difference between this segment and this segment. There's something I forgot to tell you. At this point, it's very important that you scroll down here and uncheck hide render. Normally, the hide render is a good idea because you don't want the original piece to get rendered. But in the case of the meta balls, if the original piece doesn't get rendered, none of them will get rendered. You'll see them in the viewport, but they won't get rendered. And if you did not do that, or if you want to correct that later on, you just need to go into the original armature and find its child, the original meta ball, and turn on the camera. So hide render off will automatically turn on the camera for us. Okay, now uh, don't do anything, don't, yeah, like that. Don't use any operators, <laughs> I just did. Okay, let's, uh, let's just undo the whole thing. And the good thing is that it saves all your options. So if you just redo that, you're back to where you came from, which is quite nice, especially if you have to correct something or something like that. Okay, so let's get this up to a hundred and just test okay because we have to test this with a better resolution of the meta balls because we don't want to render at this low resolution actually i should say high resolution let's put this to point two it's going to take a little bit and we can see that's not that bad at all but we have some ripples there's one quick way to get rid of those, but sometimes it doesn't work. I go into edit mode and let's see which one's the active one. This one actually. Uh, all the meta balls, of course, the linked objects all went into edit mode. Now if I press S and hold on shift because I want to scale this very slightly actually. You can see those ripples disappearing and that's actually working quite well already. I'll press Control I. So I have the other strand selected here and I'll press S and again, same thing. Okay, so if you have some more wild curves in your curves, well, this curve, then you might want to do something else. And uh, uh, just uh, for completeness sake, I'm going to undo this again. Okay, and I'm going to make these two smaller. Um, now I'll just make this smaller and delete this one and then I'll shift C, shift D and period SX minus one. Now they're even again. We want them to be as even as possible. If I select the curve, I can change the number of frames it takes for the empty to travel 100% along the curve. So I'm going to double this. And that means we're now having to, we now have to wait 100 frames until it cleared the entire path. And that means naturally with our standard settings, the coils are going to be more condensed. But sort of in a different way, maybe it'll get clear once I, or become clear once I press this again, you can now see the meta balls are spaced closer together and I can then use a smaller diameter of the helices to get the same effect. I'm gonna, um, I'll probably decrease this. Yeah, don't use the, don't use the arrows because it has to rerun the entire script every time you, you click something like that. Okay, so one is too little, let's use two. And that looks decent enough. So we have now a length of 200 frames. So I don't see any problem in actually using 200 metaballs. It's going to take a little bit to calculate, but don't worry. It still renders fairly fast if you're using cycles. I haven't tested in Blender, but probably not that 
much of a problem either. Okay, so now we have our coils, which is very nice, a very good start, but we want those connections, the bases that actually hold together those two strands. I want those, so I'm going to get them. And I'll just, uh, this one is not the last one. This one is the last one, the one with no suffix. So it's a bit crowded there, but you can see it here. This object has no suffix. So let's take it and move it to layer two. And then again, move it to layer two. Alt G, Alt R, and we have to go to frame one. So everything is in order. Now, everything is at the center, including my 3D cursor. If not, press Shift C and then add a mesh. And I want to add a cylinder. I do not need to fill this and I'll press R90 and then I'll press S and Shift X, which will scale along every axis except the X axis. OK, so let's try and get this. And this is actually rotated. Uh, that's not what I want. Let's just press Alt R on this one. I don't care if there's no key, if uh, this will jump back. This is just for reference sake. So I'll scale this up again. So it's roughly in the center, a little bit less maybe. And if this is too thick for you, don't worry, you can change that later on, no problem. But what we need to do is parent this to the armature and I want the original armature because the non-original one, that's actually offset. So I'll move this to layer two. I'll just hide this one and I'll press Alt-G, Alt-R. And now you choose this and parent it to this. Shift click on that one, choose parent to object. We don't need armature deform. The armature is actually just a dummy. We could use the object offset, but um, well, this needs to be precise. So if there's any difference in the calculation, this won't work. So I'll just use the armature offset again. It shouldn't be problematic at all. Let's press shift one. And now our problem is that we have to calculate 200 of these in plus 200 of these, because that's the settings that the um, add-on has from the last time we ran it. So I'll probably have to press pause for that one. I'll just click the armature offset. Remember, we need to have the object and the armature active or selected, and the armature needs to have the keyframes, and the object needs to be parented to the armature. And there we go. This is actually looking pretty neat already, if you're into that kind of thing, but I want these. I want them. There are a lot more spacing. And you guessed it, there is a spacing button, and that spacing actually does exactly that. But before we play with this any further, I'd like to change this to 20 for testing purposes. And I'm sorry, but this script will evaluate a lot of frames. And since there are meta balls in the scene, it will update the meta balls. One of the reasons for that is they are actually animated. So I'm sorry for that. I didn't know any other way around that. The object offset is actually a lot faster. But as I said, no meta balls. So enough apologizing. We have 20 of these, so we need an offset of 10. Spacing of 10, only every 10th meta ball is going to get a bridge. They're actually called hydrogen bridges between the bases. Okay, so in theory, we have every 10th object. And if we were to inherit our rotation from the empty alone and not from the armature, that would have worked. But we are inheriting the rotation from the armature as well. And we're offsetting it by the same amount of frames as two of these that actually move along a lot slower get. So we had one, now we have 10. We have two, let's guess. Let's choose 20 and see what happens. And there we go. This worked precisely like I wanted it. We now have the bridges in between. They are precisely arranged in between those two coils. And if we scrub through this, they actually even rotate along perfectly. So that'll work for you. 
if you want to animate it. If not, go ahead and delete the armatures. You can do that by select by type, just type it in, just select by type, armature, and then you can delete them all. It's a lot of them, but I I like the theory that I can just rotate this. And um, don't worry, this won't get rendered. Let's see, this is the armature, and this is the one below the armature. Yeah, that one. It won't get rendered. It's hidden. That's what my script does. It hides the original object from being rendered. Okay, so we could now call the quits, but let me show you two more interesting things. I'll um, go to frame one and clear the rotation. The armature, alt R, there we go. Okay, and then I'll uh, choose the cylinder and go into object mode and you can see they're linked. Everything I do in edit mode will be done to all the others as well. Okay, I can, if I want to, I can press Control R and then V and then make a gap in here. Totally up to you. Yep. Okay, there we go. We have a gap. Some like it this way. I didn't, so I didn't use that. But before we call the quits on that, there's one more important thing. And that actually took me quite a while to figure out, uh, which is why I want to include this here. Okay, now this is Cycles Render, and we have a light, we have some world illumination, so we should see something. But if I click on Render, only the bars are visible, and not the meta balls. So that took me quite a while to figure out what the heck was going on there. Let's switch to Blender Render, and that actually works. They're visible, so this is why I'm going to make a bug report later on in cycles they're not but there is a way to bring them back and that is to make them single users which is why it took me so long to figure this out because it didn't make sense to me and uh, again we'll we want to first select by type and then you choose meta and then we'll press you and choose object and data and there they are can now toy around with them however we want. Select one of them, increase the resolution again, decrease, and there we have it. DNA strand, nice and coiled. Lastly, let's have a look at the materials for this DNA. I inserted a mesh plane which are pretty large on the far side of the DNA looking from the camera and another mesh back here and of course they're both emissions if you click on this and press E you automatically get an emission material and I'll do the same for this one E and um, let's just have a look at this rendered. And you can see it's fairly fast, even though the meta balls have a pretty high resolution, which is great. Um, 0.4, that's totally fine. And let's give those a new material. And I want this to be a velvet material. So click V, and that gives us a volume material. T, apparently. F, F, it's F, so just select this. Apparently, yeah, people didn't think we'd use the velvet material very often. And what I did, I made this a little more bluish purpley, something like that. It looks pretty good already. But if you don't like these very dark regions, actually, actually, I don't mind them at all. Let's just leave it at that velvet material. And let's see what happens if we choose this material we just created for the inner ones as well. That's not bad at all. Let's uh, call this strand. And let's do just something. Um, you don't have to do that, but I thought it's it's a nice effect. So I share it with you. I'll make call this base because chemically speaking those are bases so this is the chemical base not the structural base 
and I'll use a shader add shader and I'll put it in between here and you know as soon as you use an add shader you're not physically correct anymore but I'm actually a big fan of physically incorrect shaders emission especially in the situations like these I mean those you would not be able to see light on this because they're way too small to actually be seen under a light microscope so there's no way you can actually see colors on them so let's be unrealistic input light path where is it there and let's put this in here and you can see immediately of course these light up because they are all the totally white light with a strength of one gets added to the velvet material uh, but if we choose diffuse ray only and we'll add a converter math node in between here choose multiply and take a value of five so we can see it you'll see that these parts here get illuminated and that's actually unfortunately that's more than I wanted and, I, and we can't really put in a distance let's try it this way 50 well, it makes a nice a nice uh, rim here uh, let's go this way it just gives it a nice shimmer right where the strands are and you probably have to increase the light path samplings oh this is even CPU and still pretty fast there we go very fast actually and so it's no problem to increase the samples let's go 100 and see what happens already done and yeah well we're, while we're at it let's go a thousand all right this is looking pretty good and you can see i put some depth of field in there you don't need that just made it look a little bit more interesting but you can totally leave that out if right now in these strands here in these bases we have a fairly dark place and I don't really like that so what I'll do is I'll use another add shader shader add shader and I'll add a diffuse material to that and actually I want to uh, turn this around I want the velvet shader to be added onto a diffuse material and the diffuse material should be pretty dark because we're adding something to it so it shouldn't be too bright from the beginning and I think this makes it just a little bit nicer you can also get back some of that um, bluish that purplish tint if you want to by changing the diffuse material uh, yeah I think that looks a lot nicer and there we have it we have some DNA strand before we call it quits let me just show you one more perk that you can add to the scene because when I saw that I had the busy curve and it's following the DNA right in the center I just thought there has to be something I can do with that because it just fits so well so I go to layer 2 and I make the curve a rendered object and you don't have to enable render anything you just have to give it depth I mean right now it has 0 Z scale or zero z expansion so we just need to change that we can extrude this and this is very sensitive so i'll type in point oh one manually and I hit shift one to get back to layer one and i'll switch to rendered view now we have this boring white stripe in the middle it's not going to do anything for us at all so let's give this a new material and I'm going to use emission again so click here press E and it's emitting let's crank this up so we can see it and of course this is way too bright so let's turn it down to 15 you can see it has an effect it's fairly subtle not too subtle but of course the white line is in the way I only want the glow so easy solution to you experience cycles users already know you can go down to the object options turn off the visibility for the camera and there you go you have an invisible light source which is holding nicely through the center of the dna and now you can just modulate the strength you can also 
give it some color variation. That's a bit exaggerating, I think. Let's just give it 15 and maybe a little greenish color. You just add a little bit more detail to your scene and I think this looks quite nice. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I'll see you next time.